So I was installing the rear brake pedal and realized I might not be able to get the foot peg spring in if I installed that first. So I went to pull the foot peg bolt to install the spring. And with this clutch cover on, you can't get this bolt out on this bike, which is a little bit of poor design. So I had to lay the bike over since it already has oil in it and pull that clutch cover. But now we've got a spring on the right peg. Still need to locate a spring for the left peg, but luckily that one's easy to pop off. This shiny new 220 millimeter rear rotor came in from Warp 9. Gonna get it installed on the rear wheel and then get the rear brake bled. So check out how badass this vacuum pump is. Got some pressure in there, got the valve open, and it's just slowly sucking air out. And my only job when using this method is to make sure that it's got fluid. Would you look at that? Rear brake. So here is the plan for the exhaust. This is a Pro Circuit works pipe from a 2004 Kawasaki KX250. It requires a couple small modifications. For one, I bought the 04 exhaust bracket mount instead of the 01 because the pipe sits farther forward than the 01 does. So that makes all of the front mounting work perfectly. But then there's one more modification. The end of the stock silencer comes to about right here. I need to move the end of the pipe 22 millimeters back. I think this works pipe was an amazing call. I just couldn't bring myself to put this banged up platinum on a bike this nice. I think when I started this build, I hadn't fully decided that it was gonna be this all out. And now knowing what this build has turned into, having a works pipe on this is gonna make it that much nicer. All right, about to load the bike up in my truck for the first time, although incomplete. I am taking the pipes over to Jonah at his welding shop so that we can get this Pro Circuit works pipe modified and all bolted up. Super stoked.
is about all I can say right now, along with, I'm really glad that worked. Jonah did an incredibly clean weld, but with that said, you can barely even see it as it's tucked nicely behind the frame. Everything bolted up beautifully, and I now have a Pro Circuit works pipe on a 2001 KX250. The fender scraped the pipe just a little bit, so I heated up a razor blade and sliced a couple millimeters off. Just waiting on a radiator and a fat head cylinder head to fire this bike up for the first time. Usually I turn the space heater off when I record, but can't do it today. It's negative 14. The new radiator got here. It's in really nice shape. Obviously this one was just a little bit too crunched and I could not fit the louver and obviously the threads on that were important. This would have been possible to fix, but I found this on eBay for like 40 bucks, which was a little cheaper and easier than it would have been to deal with that. And at that point, the only thing I'll be waiting on is the head. So to be honest, I am going to do a loose fit of the radiators and the shrouds and get those graphics installed. Got the radiators and shrouds bolted up temporarily and it's finally time to reveal these shroud graphics. Decal Works did such a good job on these, I am so excited. If you're wondering why it's got a T, Kawasaki removed the F from their four stroke models so I thought it would be sweet to put a T on for two stroke for one of the old bikes since it's coming back brand new. So we've got our 2001 Kawasaki KX250T. guys so the full story on the cylinder head Luke at Fathead Racing sent me out a cylinder head for this bike I requested black and he accidentally sent it out blue this was a few weeks ago so I thought about just running it but I figured I should ask him eh, can he re-anodize it so I asked him and he said yep no problem I can re-anodize it send it back out so I sent it back out and that was almost three weeks ago now um, and I was hoping it'd be a pretty quick turnaround, but I guess he's just been slammed and he hasn't had a chance to send it out to the anodizer. So he said it's probably gonna be about another month. So I'm not really in a rush to finish this thing for any reason, but I can't stand watching it sit here for a month, not knowing if it runs. So I am going to actually bolt up the OEM cylinder head and fire this thing up for the first time. Is it necessary? No, but I wanna hear it run and it'll be nice, I'll have some time while I wait for the other head to get jetting right and work out any kinks if there are any. That is the plan. I know I said I was completely done stripping paint, but the original head, head, mount, head mounts here need to be cleaned up a little bit, so I'll polish these up.
bike is completely together. I need to put some gas in it and that's it. We do, unfortunately, have a bit of a coolant leak. So this is not a good seal. So I will have to pull this back apart. But for now, I'm still gonna put some gas in it and get her fired up, see if she runs. Gas on, choke on, let's check it out. But she runs, baby! Upon further inspection, it would appear I have the throttle cable routed incorrectly, and I think it's just not allowing it to close all the way. Okay, so I just, I just verified in the manual, I do have this routed incorrectly. The throttle cable I have routed down here and coming up around the radiator should actually follow the main frame all the way up right here. So I am going to need to reroute that. Okay, so rerouting the throttle cable is actually kind of a pain in the ass, but got it done. This time, fingers crossed, fires up with no rev to the moon. Here we go. Had to get the snap for the homies. All right guys, so a couple kinks to work out. I am glad that I decided to do it with this head so that I can get all of this done before the other head gets here so that really once I put that head on, it'll be complete, complete. Clearly I didn't give the best tips in my carburetor rebuild because mine is leaking. And then like I showed you, there's a little coolant leak here. So we're gonna have to seal this up a little better. But other than that, just wow. Just wow. Clutch works. And the gears are actually really smooth. So I think that the needle might have just been stuck because it's no longer pouring gas now that it's warmed up a little bit and I did do the float height based on the manual, so we might actually be good there. Obviously, it's running super rich right now. I have stock jetting in it, and I'm at 5,000 feet, but I figure that's a good place to start, especially on a fresh engine to let everything break in, and then I'll work on the jetting and get it leaned out a little bit. I'm also curious. I am obviously gonna have to deal with this coolant leak, but when I first poured the coolant in, it was leaking at like a pretty consistent rate, but now it's really not leaking much. So I'm wondering if things are just kind of seeding. Um, I, I don't know how much the freezing cold plays into this with the aluminum contracting. So we'll have to see, but overall I am just absolutely hyped. So, so, so stoked on this bike and how it has turned out. So really there are only a couple small things to get this thing completely done along with waiting for the other cylinder head, which looking at this, Man, I'm stoked on how it looks now. That head is gonna look even sicker. I do have one question that I'd like some opinions on. Do I leave this plain black seat cover or do I get a custom seat cover? One option being all black with purple ribs or black sides with a purple top. I think the purple top would look pretty sweet in line with this fender and then could do black ribs on that. So guys, that is it for episode seven of the 2001 Kawasaki KX250 build. I would say there will be an episode eight, just getting everything finished up, doing a nice photo shoot and actually ripping this thing up and down the block when there's a little less snow. But for now, 
Thanks for watching. And I hope you guys are as stoked to see this bike come together as I am. It's been a lot of months in the making and it is everything I hoped it would be.